Hello YouTube, I'm Amelia and for today I wanted to share a little announcement for you guys. I've been thinking for a while now where exactly I wanted to go with my YouTube channel. I do really enjoy making Liz Lisa content and fashion and beauty related videos and I don't think I ever will stop making those kind of videos. I wanted to start doing other videos that weren't really like Liz Lisa or beauty related videos. I feel like those videos are just very informative and to the point. They don't really show exactly who I am as a person and I wanted to start making these kind of heart to heart sit down videos where I talk about different topics and just kind of open up and sit down and kind of have like this virtual chat with you guys. It's more just like here are my thoughts about a certain topic even with the amount of people that love Liz Lisa and how much I love Liz Lisa. It can get kind of boring just making videos about Liz Lisa all the time which is why I try to think of more creative ideas on like what I want to start posting on my YouTube channel that aren't really Liz Lisa related videos but are still fun and relatable videos that you know share a little bit about myself and is also a little bit different and a change from what I usually post on my channel. There's only one thing that I require you guys to do before you are eligible to vote on my heart to heart polling sessions and that is to follow me on my Instagram page because that lets me know that you are interested in seeing more of these kind of videos in the future. Once I see that you are following me on my Instagram page, I will take your vote into account whenever I see the percentage at the end of the day as to which question ends up winning. If you are not following me and you decide to vote, I will unfortunately not consider your vote applicable into the winning percentage. I just want to know how many of you guys support this idea of making these kind of videos so it's very important that you follow me on Instagram so then it lets me know that you're interested and that you want to connect with me better as a YouTuber. start with answering this question because it's it's quite a broad topic to discuss and to cover but I guess like the best way to answer this question is to start from the very beginning. My love and passion for learning Japanese was not from how most people might have gotten introduced to Japanese watching anime and it's not that I never watched anime as a kid I, I watched a lot of anime like I definitely went through that awkward otaku phase whenever I was in my early middle school years to my early high school years. That is not how I got into learning Japanese. It was kind of weird because whenever I was little, I, I didn't have a lot of female friends growing up. The only friend that I had most of my early years was this little Japanese boy that lived next to me. You know, at that point in my life, I had never met any other Japanese people. There weren't a lot of Japanese people where I lived when I was little. He was like a completely new person to me because before him, you know, I, I didn't even know that there were Japanese people because I don't know what a five-year-old would think. <laughs> like in a world full of so many different people and languages and cultures. I was really interested in learning about other people's cultures from a young age. I didn't know anything about Japan or anime or any of that kind of stuff before I met this boy. It wasn't until he opened up and started talking to me about his culture is when I started getting really interested in learning Japanese and learning more about the culture itself. It wasn't necessarily because I liked anime or he liked anime that I wanted to learn Japanese to watch anime because I feel like that's like the big stereotype with learning Japanese is like oh you know you only want to learn Japanese to watch anime without subtitles. It's like how many times have you heard that phrase before. That's kind of like the general idea of what people assume whenever you want to learn Japanese. But for me, I never wanted to learn Japanese to watch anime. It was more because I was genuinely interested in the language and culture and having a close childhood friend that introduced me to that when I never knew anything about Japan or the culture before meeting him was such a big thing for me. It wasn't 
from that experience in my childhood is where I actually started learning Japanese. From my early childhood to my elementary school years, I didn't really have formal Japanese language class to actually properly learn Japanese. My friend ended up moving back to Japan and it was heartbroken and everything. But then I had some new friends when I started my elementary school years that also happened to be Japanese. It was more of an open door for me because my childhood friend never taught me how to formally speak Japanese. He was just telling me about like all these cool things about Japan. I can remember till this day the first phrase that I ever asked my female Japanese friend to teach me. I, I don't know why it was this phrase exactly, but for some reason it's, it's always been like a memory that stuck to me for all these years. That phrase was, can I have a hamburger or something like that. I, I don't know why, like it was from that specific memory that I started wanting to learn more and more about the language. Then fast forward it to my early high school years and I've moved around a lot throughout my childhood. I used to live up in the north, then I moved south, and then now I live here in Texas. I moved to Texas whenever I was in the eighth grade. For the most part, I was still very socially awkward with people. I was like this weird person who was going through this otaku phase. I was like really into drawing little anime characters. Nobody wanted to be friends with somebody like that. I continue to still have my love for Japanese culture despite the fact that I was very awkward. When I started high school, that's whenever I got to formally start learning Japanese and where I got introduced to more and more people relating to that culture. It feels a little bit weird opening up personal things from like my high school years. It's been many years so it doesn't really affect me talking about old things like that. In my freshman year of high school, I registered to take Japanese language classes and I was lucky that at my school there was a Japanese teacher. Most high schools only teach Spanish and French, German, those kind of languages. Japanese is probably one of those languages that's really rare to come by unless you live in an area where there are a good bit of Japanese people or somebody that can teach Japanese. I got lucky and I was able to take Japanese very early on in my life. From me learning Japanese in high school, that's when I got to actually learn the language and know more than just saying stuff like, can I have a hamburger? For the first early years of my high school, learning Japanese was not that hard for me to kind of catch on to things. I felt so confident when I first started Japanese in high school, like, oh my gosh, I already know everything. But then when I actually started taking the class, then I realized, okay, wait, I don't actually know anything. It wasn't really long until I started learning hiragana and katakana and eventually just like basic elementary school kanji. I didn't feel like I struggled so much learning Japanese because for me, I've always had that love and passion and I think that with anyone learning a foreign language, if you really love the culture, you will push yourself to do better in learning the language. I was simply taking Japanese because I had genuinely had an interest for it since I was five years old. There were all these people taking Japanese thinking like, oh, it's gonna be a piece of cake. I watch tons of anime. I don't need to actually sit down and read from a textbook and actually learn the language. Japanese people will just naturally know how to have a conversation with me if I ever go to Japan, which I will definitely tell you now, that's not the case at all. Aside from like taking Japanese language courses, I had a bit of an advantage because I was dating a Japanese person at that point in my life. Having somebody who I can go to to ask questions whenever I needed help on something is definitely a good thing. Dating someone who's Japanese is not necessarily way better than someone who is not dating someone who's Japanese. And it wasn't until I got to college is when I realized that it started getting quite difficult. It wasn't just a walk in the park learning Japanese. It was at that point in my life where I had to like stop myself. Whoa, I'm actually learning a language now. In high school, I, I didn't really struggle learning like hiragana and katakana. Like that was like a snap for me. I 
easily got that down first couple weeks of us learning it not until i got to college that i started learning more difficult things like more conversational and real life scenario stuff the stuff that i learned later in life in college was so much more usable <laughs> in a real life situation. You know, whenever I went to Japan, that's when I used most of my knowledge from my college year of Japanese rather than like the stuff that I learned my high school year. Whenever I finished my last semester of my Japanese language courses in college, I had these big aspirations to transfer to a big university in Japan. Actually, my Japanese college professor is the person who pushed me to go overseas to Japan because she had this talk with me and she asked me why I didn't feel confident to go to Japan because she definitely knew that I had the love and passion. She didn't see why I would be holding myself back staying here and never going to Japan. I told her that I was scared to go over there because even with all the knowledge that I have, I, I still didn't feel I was ready. But she told me that you're never really ready to go somewhere, you know, you just have to believe in yourself, as cliche as that sounds. Um, you just gotta believe that you can do it and that all the things that you've learned throughout your years of learning a language, it all comes down to that point whenever you're over there. If you've actually learned anything from all those years of learning that language, I decided to convince myself that I was just gonna go ahead and go to Japan and see how everything would go. Without her words of encouragement to push me to go to Japan, I would have probably never left to Japan. I had all these setbacks because I was I was scared to go over there. Before I actually went there all by myself, I, I thought I would not make it in Japan. I, I felt like with all this knowledge of learning Japanese, I felt like I still wasn't ready to go to Japan. With my 7-8 years of knowing Japanese, I, I still don't feel like I know anything. If you don't have the confidence in yourself to speak Japanese and interact with the natives around you, I feel like you're always gonna be stuck in that little bubble. You don't want to go out and venture, do things on your own. After I finally made it to Japan, I was really scared but really excited to be over there. And I didn't actually use my Japanese until I had a day where I was completely by myself because the first couple days I had a Japanese friend take me around Tokyo. And saw for my Japanese vlog videos. On the days that I was completely by myself, I, I was really scared to go out and get on the train and go to places on my own, but I think that for the most part, I, I had a relatively easy time getting my way around Tokyo. I think the hardest part about being in Japan is just knowing your way around, being able to understand street signs and the subway stations. There were a few instances that I, I did get lost while I was trying to make my way around the train station, trying to find one stop to get on another stop. One particular memory I remember when I was in Japan that I had this flash of reality hit me that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in Japan right now and I'm completely lost. I don't know where I am. It was literally one of the scariest moments of my life. <laughs>